Hello everyone, this is going to be a brief introduction of the new responsive layout widget that we've introduced with Profound UI version 6. This widget will allow you to be able to get your screens work for multiple device sizes from small phones to large desktops. So I'll show you right now. I'm going to resize this browser window which has the new responsive layout. You'll see that this section here has resized once I've shrunk things and rearranged itself. So now we've got this on top of uh, these other elements. So imagine you wanted to design a screen for different sizes of the browser. It responds not just the width, but also you can rearrange items. And you can also have your screens work for different device types. Okay, to get started with the responsive layouts, we pull up our visual designer. We look in the widgets toolbox under layouts. There's a new icon here responsive layout so just drag it onto the screen which starts out with some default settings so we have our four columns and two rows that appear here you can add more containers using these plus and minuses which change the layout items you can also specify the layout items there and you can expand it to fill the container it'll fill the entire canvas if it's by itself so what if we want to change any of these this may not look very useful for what you're doing so we want to change the rows and columns we have this nice new editor. So with this tool, you can change one container so that it fills up multiple columns. You can ha even have containers span across multiple rows, which is something you can't do in some other frameworks. When you change in any of those properties, under behind the scenes, there are some CSS rules that are getting applied. So if you're familiar with other frameworks with responsive design, you've probably heard of the 12 column concept. So sometimes it's nice to think of splitting a web page into 12 columns. So our default rule, just for simplicity, we just have four columns. But if you want and more comfortable dealing with 12 columns, you can add columns to yours. So as you can see, things change quite a bit. We only specified rules for these first two containers. The first was set to span four columns, which was the entire width of the screen when we had a four column layout. Now with 12 columns, it's not. And because these other columns, we never specified any positions or rules for them, they automatically will fill the first row because this didn't fill up the first row and there's remaining space. These are just gonna flow up with it. Now, if you notice, there are two rows here, but there's only one explicitly defined row. Behind the scenes in the CSS, this property is what defines how many rows there are. You see that there are, there are 12 of these FRs, there's 12 defined column rules, one row defined. If we were to add a row, you would see an extra entry in there. Add another row. Okay, so now there are three. So why does it look like there are two? Well, since we specified this one to span two rows, there, are, there weren't two rows, so it implicitly created an extra row. So if you change and remove so that it doesn't span two rows, then now everything fits onto one row it doesn't implicitly create an extra row. So as before, when the number of containers did not fit on the one row, and there were not enough columns, that's another way where implicit rows are created. So if you want, you can change where each container starts. You notice that all the other containers are shifted down when I move this one. But that's because their positions aren't defined. But you can also drag and change the order. So if we want the three to appear before the two, behind the scenes in the DOM, these each of these containers are div tags. And this is the first one, this is the second one, and the third one. In other frameworks, you can't reorder, you can't put the third one before the second one. So why might you want to reorder the divs? Well, suppose you put every a bunch of widgets inside the second one, and then you decide later, oh, I don't like the position of all those. Well, instead of moving everything out of the second one and switching the order and tediously dragging all the widgets around, you could just change the order inside the layout, just change the actual container layouts instead of changing all the widgets inside of them. Perhaps things would look better in a different order on a smaller screen. That's another case where you might want to just change the order of the containers themselves. That is a great new part of responsiveness where not just the sizes of things change horizontally and vertically, like with the percent of the container, the browser window, or the device, you can have things change the actual order and the layout. We could change these rules. We're just going to clear these to put it back the way it was. Okay, so 
right now I've changed this to be a span of four. And when I added some columns, it no longer filled the entire screen. So what if I always want this to fill the entire width of the screen? We could specify its end line. So one way you could do that, you could say, I want it to end what is the, actually the 13th line. See that everything else shifted down. It would be better if we just clicked this minus one. There are these negative units say negative one means the last column. Negative two means the second to last. And the reason why it is only spanning one, that's the default. It always spans one unless you set We've only set the end position. Now we need to set the start position. Okay, so now it fills up the entire screen. Even if we were to remove columns, it's always going to fill up the entire screen. So if we go back to our any screen, you notice that it doesn't fill the entire screen. These rules under any will apply unless there are other rules that follow to overrule them. So in this case, when the view is a smaller device, which would be some sort of handheld, or a phone, then these rules apply. So by setting the rules for different device sizes, that allows things to behave responsively. That allows the layout to change depending on the size of the, the viewport. Okay, so if we go to this one, we can resize the, the rows if we'd like. We can also resize columns. By default, we just have the columns always uniformly spaced. If you look over here at the rules, you can see this 1FR. If you know CSS at all, you're familiar that things are, there are pixel values. There are also uh, percent values you can set. So now this row is a percentage. What's this FR? That's a new thing for this CSS grid layout. So what that means is split up, in the case of the columns, split this width up into one, two, three, four, four equal fractions. So this is 25%. Each of these are 25%. In the case of the rows, there's only one explicitly defined row. What's going on is it, it says, oh, there's one explicitly defined row. I'm going to try and take up as much area as I can. And then the content inside of these containers is keeping it from taking up the entire screen. But if we were to add a row, so now there's two fractions. Each are 50%. So the fraction is a handy way to avoid if the number of rows or columns change instead of having go back and recalculate every percentage instead of having to say, oh, well, it's not 25% anymore, it's 33%. You just do one fraction and have them all this one FR unit, and then the layout automatically spaces everything out. So if we resize a fractional unit, if we increase this one to two, it's almost the same as if, add, as if we were adding a new row because these two row are 25% each. This is a two FR, so it's 50% of the height and if I drag this up to zero FR that's like setting the width to zero pixels it hides the whole thing so you may accidentally do that and when you do you'll notice you try to drag it there's some other line in, in here it's a good time to introduce the row gap okay so that line is usually at the top because we don't have a huge gap let's bring this back okay so we see the row gap that's the gap between all the rows there's also a column gap on the left side so you can have whatever spacing looks good to you, or just leave it at zero. And of course, for different media sizes or screen sizes, you can have different gaps. So if you want a big gap on one size, you can have no gap on the other sides. The ability to change the layout and all the different properties for the different screen sizes is what makes this such a useful tool. You only design the screen once in for, for one display file for one RPG program then all based on your rules, your screen will respond differently depending on the size of the customer or your user's browser window, or if they're on a smaller device, things change for the smaller device. And that ends the introduction to our responsive layout. Mm -hmm.